guys! Welcome to another video discussion. This video is the second part of our clothing discussion. When designing, there are several ideas or aspects of design that needs to be kept in mind. These aspects of design can be categorized into two areas, principles and elements of design. One way to describe this is Principles are the directions for a cake recipe and the elements are the ingredients. The directions are flexible and should be interpreted within a current fashion or problem the designer is trying to solve. For example, the directions would apply differently for a design of a costume than for a design of a current fashion garment. As we know, Clothes are worn to emphasize the good points and hide the defects and imperfections of our physical trait. But how can we apply principles and elements of design here? Well, let's find out! In principles of design, we need to consider that good outfits should have proportion, balance, harmony, emphasis, and rhythm to express art principles. The first principle is proportion. In design, involves a relationship of one part to another and even space relationships are more interesting than even ones. In clothing, this creates the feeling of unity that is created when all of the parts, either sizes, numbers, or amounts relate well with each other. In this case, a longer jacket works with a longer skirt. The same goes with a long pants works better with short jacket or crop top. Also, when drawing or sketching the human form, proportion refers to the size of the head, but in comparison to the rest of the body. Scale, therefore, refers to the overall size of any object or its parts when compared to the size of other parts or objects in the design. Now, take a look at this picture. Which of these two pictures shows proportions? Yes, you are right! The picture on the left side. Best ensembles the proportion because, unlike the other picture, the long skirt works well and looks good with long sleeves. In choosing accessories, proportion should always be considered. For example, a woman with large facial features would not choose a small bag or a small hat, which will make her feature even larger or vice versa. A simple concept to understand is balance. It is the feeling of rest and equilibrium. This is essential to the total design of a costume. There are two types of balance, and in fact, they relate to more than just fashion design. These two types relate to almost any type of design and art. Symmetrical and asymmetrical balance are the only two types that designers and artists use when it comes to balance of their piece. The first type is formal balance or symmetrical balance. The outfit is symmetrical if you were to divide it right down the middle and both sides are exactly the same. Symmetrical is achieved when two sides of a design are alike on either side of its vertical center. Balance in the use of color is essential for a pleasing effect. Next is informal or asymmetrical balance. It is achieved by using space, color, and the varying importance of objects to produce a feeling of rest. Asymmetrical balance is quite popular in dressy evening wear because it is dramatic and eye-catching. But aside from these two very common types, we also have radial balance. Radial balance is when major parts of the garment design radiate from the central part of the garment creating a sunburst. Unity is the feeling of harmony between all parts or objects of the design. The third principle of design is the harmony. It is the pleasing combination of hues, values, and intensities. Also considered as the overall design creates a sense of completeness. In simpler way, when things look right together, you have created unity or harmony. Lines and shapes that repeat each other shows unity. Colors that have a common hue are harmonious. Texture also helps create unity, but too much uniformity sometimes can be boring. Unity is a difficult principle to define. The important thing here is a goal for overall look. What your eyes is drawn to on any outfit is considered to be emphasis. Means that one part of a design must be more important than the other parts. 
the eye should go first to this part. It could be anything that you focus on, from a horizontal stripe, a belt jewel, or contrasting colors. The fifth and last principle of design is rhythm. Rhythm is the movement of the eye from one part of the design to other parts. Repetition of a line or shape is one of the most common ways of attaining rhythm. Rhythm can also be referred to as repeated low use of lines, colors, trims, shapes, or details that create a pattern that the eye can follow throughout the design. Examples could be stripes, polka dots, ruffles, and etc. Now, let us discuss the elements of design. The first element, line. Line is the simplest element of design. The basic part of any design is formed by lines. The eye tends to follow the direction of the line in a dress design or in the fabric of the dress. There are two types of lines and these are horizontal line and a vertical line. What can this line do? Horizontal line can give the impression of shorter and heavier, while vertical line gives the impression of height. Stripes are so versatile, they're basically a neutral. Maybe it's because these trusty verticals and horizontals often come in easy to match hues like black, white, and navy, or perhaps stripes are simply the new black. Matched with other fun prints, textures, and colors, stripes can transform any outfit into a thoughtful and creative ensemble. Form are the most important in fashion and accessory design. Silhouette is the most obvious visual element of a garment. It is probably the first thing that is seen. The silhouette can be described as the outline of the entire garment and it is often called form. The goal of a silhouette is to complement the shape of the body. However, exaggeration is often used in order to create a certain type of effect or emphasize a certain part of the body, whichever is the current fashion trend. Textures is another important element that actually can determine a lot. It appeals strongly to the sense of touch, whether it's coarse, fine, smooth, rough, wrinkled, sleek, glossy, or slippery. Textures as well as lines can create illusions. One must choose textures for clothes that will harmonize the overall design. A soft wool give a quite different effect from the gloss and sheen of satin in the evening dress. Bulky, rough fabrics tend to increase the size of the design, whereas smooth fabrics decrease it. Next element of design is shape. Shapes help clothes reveal or disguise a natural body contour or shape. Choosing the right clothing shapes will make the person more flattering. Wide full shapes clothes will make you look larger while trim, compact dress will make you look smaller. Straight, tubular shapes will make the wearer look taller while fitted clothes will reveal the natural body contours. And last is color. Color is the light contains within itself all the sun's rays, and when it is broken into wavelengths of light, a sensation is produced upon the retina of the eye. How colors use in clothes? Black, Dark tones or deeply grayed colors tend to make the figure appear smaller or slimmer than bright or light colors. A plain color makes the figure look slimmer than a combination of contrasting colors. Another way to use color is to keep in mind that if you have a very small figure, try to avoid wearing over large designs in prints, blades, or stripes. And contrast and accents should be done with care. So after everything is all said and done, it is really isn't that difficult to understand these basic principles and elements. And once you do come to understand all of this, you won't be able to stop finding them in every outfit that you look at for now on. Just take a look in your drawers and closet and see how many principles and elements you can find. So, see you! Goodbye!